What's up, sons? It's Blind Ride with Savatech once again, and I have yet another mining video. Today, we're going to be talking about how to mine Ethereum on Windows 10 for the year 2021. Start the new year off right and start earning some Ethereum with that computer hardware you have laying around. While it's not gaming or in production, you might as well make some money, right? Without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, you're going to want to download Brave. Not really. You can use any Chromium based browser. This includes Microsoft Edge, Brave, of course, and then, of course, Chrome. Now, here's the thing Brave is built on the blockchain. You can also earn BAT token while using Brave, and then you can use that token to trade out from some, for some real world money. Pretty awesome deal there. I highly recommend it. And its privacy tools are great, including options to access Tor straight through the browser and so on and so forth. Anyways, link will be down in the description. Check it out. It does work with all of your Chrome plugins. And the plugin we're going to be taking a look at today is going to be MetaMask. So every miner needs a wallet to store their currency. The reason I recommend MetaMask or mining to MetaMask right now is because once you get a payout, you will essentially want to go ahead and start utilizing the Ethereum that you have to make even more money. You can do this in MetaMask and Uniswap very easily. So I think it's a good step. And when you guys are ready to start learning about Uniswap and adding liquidity to tokens, let me know in the comment section below. The first thing you're going to do is just go to metamask.io and click the install metamask for chrome alternatively you can go straight to the metamask plugin page in the chrome web store once there you're going to click the add to brave add to brave button or add to chrome if you're in chrome or add to edge if you're in edge and click add extension once the extension is installed it will take you to a get started page at this point you're going to click get started we're going to be creating a new wallet. So click create a wallet, agree, and then choose an easy password. Just kidding. Choose a difficult password. I recommend for creating passwords using a password manager. This could be anything from Kaspersky to LastPass or Dashlane. I have no preference. I currently use Kaspersky because it's built into my suite. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments section below. Once done, you're going to click I have read and agree to the terms of use. One more thing that you could use, which I will show you, is random.org. At random.org, you can scroll down to the password generator. Make sure that you have at least eight characters for MetaMask and click get passwords. At this point, you'll be presented with a list of passwords and this is a an easy way and a free open source way without downloading any other software to generate random passwords. Next, we're gonna click create. And this is where you will get your secret key or secret words. This is for recovery of the wallet and is basically what you would use if you clicked the import wallet button and you're either moving browsers or moving machines and you just got a new machine. This is very important. A, you don't want to share this with anybody, and B, you don't want to lose it. Now that makes this pretty difficult. There are plenty of ways to go ahead and secure this information, and we'll go over three of them right now. But first, you're going to want to go ahead and control C it and put it in a notepad, or what I would recommend also is just writing it down on a piece of paper to continue setup. Now that we have it in a notepad, you need to decide where to keep it. If you want to keep it on the computer, I would recommend using something like an external USB drive that you encrypt with basically the built-in Windows 10 BitLocker option to go ahead and encrypt the information. Another option is using Nord Locker, which has been uh, pretty helpful when moving between machines for me. It is basically an encrypted cloud storage service and is uh, works pretty well. And there's a free option that gives you three gigabytes, which is usually enough to store keys or at least store keys temporarily. For the ultimate security, you really want to write this down and put it in a fireproof 
safe or somewhere where you wouldn't lose it. And that's because anytime your key is on the internet or touching the internet in any form or fashion, there is always a possibility of getting hacked. One of the things that you will notice with MetaMask that they do here is when you're recovering, you don't actually type the words out. The reasoning for this is to prevent people from gaining your information through software known as key loggers. So to confirm the secret backup, you'll see we actually just click the buttons for the words. So we have river and you want to do it in order, cupboard, knock, certain, hope, loud, melt, vehicle, cash, boss, head, and silver. So now that we've put them all in order, we're gonna click confirm and we can start using the MetaMask wallet. As I discussed earlier, token swapping is here. So you can swap directly in the MetaMask wallet, which makes it super duper easy. And this is all what people are starting to refer to as DeFi with Uniswap. DeFi stands for decentralized finance. And it's just an additional way for miners to essentially make money off of the coins that they've mined. That's why I recommend using MetaMask. Your other options for wallets include exchanges. However, it's recommended you never mine to an exchange as well as paper wallets and hardware wallets. All of those options are great, but for beginners, I think MetaMask is the way to go. So now that we have this, we are gonna go ahead and click our account and copy it to clipboard and paste it in that notepad. That way we know this is the recovery key for this wallet. This is your public wallet address and it's okay for the wallet address to be exposed to the outside world because it's how you accept and send payments. It will all be tied to this address. The next step is going to be downloading the miner. So today we're going to be using LOL Miner 1.17. It was released 16 days ago, and we are going to be obtaining it directly from their GitHub. There are a lot of different phishing websites as well as a lot of different issues when trying to search for a miner in Google or even DuckDuckGo where you could download something malicious. And this is important because you need to keep in mind that all miners are considered malicious to some extent by every antivirus solution, which means you will have to make an exception. So you wanna be very, very certain that you're downloading from a safe website because you will have to allow it through, of course, your firewalls as well as through the browsers, so on and so forth. Brave browser is a little bit easier. Chrome will try to block it, so will Edge. Um, so if you wanna avoid that, I don't find that the Brave browser blocks it quite as often because obviously it's built on blockchain. So we're gonna scroll down and we are looking for the LLL miner v1.17win64.zip and we're going to start downloading. Once downloaded, we're going to click the little up arrow and click show in folder. At this point, we can go ahead and extract it. I would recommend putting it somewhere that you want to access it from. I personally usually put it on a secondary drive called games under my miners folder. But for today, we're just going to extract it in the downloads folder. So you will right click and say extract all if you're using the built-in Windows 10 decompression tool, or you can use 7-zip or WinRAR, it's all up to you. If you are using 7-zip or WinRAR, I assume that you already know how that functions. So we're gonna click extract all and then extract. At this point, we will have all the files to start mining. There are some pre-configured batch files here and they are preceded by .bat. If you do not see the .bat or the .txt, these are known as file extensions and you will need to go into your folder options to be able to see them and this will be important later on. So what you'll want to do is go down to your Cortana search bar and search for file explorer options. Once you have that, you'll click the view tab 
And then down here, you want to uncheck the box for hide extensions for known file types. Because essentially, if we have it like that, this is probably what it looks like if you haven't already done this before. And yeah, I know. <laughs> and there's my antivirus. So you see here that we basically have uh, no file extensions. So if we wanted to create our own batch file, it would be a little bit more difficult. This just makes it clear. Uncheck it, click apply, and then you should see all of your file extensions. So now that we have our batch files, we need to go ahead and obtain the rest of the information to configure the files. We'll be doing that by heading over to our favorite mining pool, ethermine.org. The mining pool is up to you. There are many different options, and depending on your region, you may want to choose one uh, that is closer to you. That being said, Ethermine is most popular in the US, but does have international options as well. And then of course in China, you have things like Spark Pool, which would be the next largest one. And we'll go over specific pools and maybe do pool reviews later on. If you're interested, let me know once again in the comment section below. So at this point, you'll just want to click the little menu button up in the top left and click the start mining option. And here is where you are going to find your mining server. They have options for Asia, Europe, US East, US West, and then of course the ports. You have your SSL port, your stratum port, ports, and all stratum ports right here. We're gonna be basically just modifying a pre-configured batch file from the miner that we downloaded. So we're gonna go back to our file explorer we are going to find the one that says mine ETH. And this is something we also need to talk about. Okay, so like I said, this is something we need to talk about. Your performance is gonna be better on cards with over four gigabytes of video memory when using typically just the standard mine ETH. However, if you have a card that only has four gigs of video memory, you're gonna want to play with the mine underscore ETH underscore 4G batch file. Now I am working on getting a four gig card to test with. And unfortunately the one that I thought I had was actually one of those reference RX 580s that you could flash and get the eight gig version of. So guess what? It did have eight gigs of VRAM on that particular card. So I don't actually have a true four gigabyte card to test with. So for today, we're just going to be going over the standard basic setup for mining with cards with over four gigs. And we'll do a how to later on the rest. You'll want to right click the batch file and click edit. And this is where Windows is going to protect your PC. So you'll have to click more info and click run anyway. This is the this is why we spoke about the importance of downloading it from the official GitHub uh, as opposed to other sources because you are going to have to add an exception to Windows. So we're going to click run anyway and then here is our configuration file. As you can see we have our set pool and this is where we input the information from Ethermine. For us today, we're gonna to be using US1. So you'll go over to the pool, click Control C, highlight the pool, and do Control V. Then we'll want to grab the port, 4444, Control C, and put that in the port, and it'll come right after the colon here. Make sure the colon is still there. And then we have our wallet address. Going back to our public wallet address, over here, we're gonna highlight it and do Control C, and then come back over here and do Control V. Now we have our wallet address and the pool set. We're gonna click File and Save. Once we've done that, we can go back to the folder and double click the batch file to start the miner. Alrighty, so now we can talk about how to read what's going on on the miner. So here, basically what we have is we started the DAG on GPU zero. We have a single RX 6800 in here, not overclocked or flashed currently. And then you'll see here that we have found a share and that we have accepted a share. This is when the GPU starts working and then we will get a report of the speed. 
The speed is calculated on Ethereum as mega hash per second. This number will give you an idea of your potential profit. Now we're at 61 mega hash a second. To calculate profit, you can go back to a web browser and use a site called what to mine. So in the case of this one, we are at 61 mega hash. Now you should calculate watts as well as input your cost for kilowatt per hour. But for today, we're just gonna calculate what I would call your gross revenue. So we're gonna click calculate and scroll down here and you can see that a single RX 6800 makes $2.78 a day in revenue. So now that we have the miner running, we know what our projected uh, revenue will be. <clears throat> we will let the miner run for a little bit and then we will come back and make sure it is actually mining to the pool and we'll go over how to read the pool. Okie dokie, so let's go over reading the pool. Head it back over to ethermine.org. Make sure you go to the home tab and scroll down to find the option for uh, to search your Ethereum miner address. Go back to the config that you created and right click and copy your wallet address. Go back to the Ethermine webpage and paste the address into the search tab and click search. At this point, you will be pre presented with your dashboard. The dashboard is going to have essentially all of the information that you need to understand to calculate your revenue and actual on pool revenue and hash rate. Currently, it's only showing 5.2 because we just started mining. Up here, you will see workers active and inactive. So this is a good spot to take a look at if you have a mining rig down or to see if you have a mining rig down. Next, you have your unpaid balance. And the unpaid balance is how much Ethereum is actually on the pool that you have earned. Once you hit your minimum payment threshold, that balance will be paid out to the MetaMask wallet that we talked about earlier. Over here, you have your estimated earnings, which will show you both daily, weekly, and monthly. Not both, but all daily, weekly, and monthly. And you can also convert it to what your earnings would be in BTC conversion and USD. As you can see here, estimated earnings monthly with five mega hash is $7. This will change as that number rises. As you can see here, we have a reported hash rate of 60 mega hash a second. Over time, these charts will fill out and you will have an idea of when the miners are not working and working. It will also give you a, an amount of valid shares, workers and stale shares. If you have stale shares, you might wanna check your overclock or if you have, of course, invalid shares, you might want to check your overclock. Now, minimum payout you can change. Scroll back up to the dashboard, click the little down arrow, and you will have your settings tab. Under settings here, you will essentially type in an email address, and then you will type in your IP, and then set your payment threshold. For most people that are hobby mining or just starting out, you will want to set it to 0.05. Now, to find your IP address, you can use basically whatismyip.org or one of those various ones. Clearly, I will not be showing you guys that even though we are on a VPN, you never know. So maybe my VPN connects to the same IP over and over again, blah, blah, blah. For safety, I will not show you guys what my IP is, but you would want to go to whatismyip.org. Link will be down in the description. You will type your IP into this box and then you will click submit and it will change your payment threshold to 0 0.05. What this means back on the dashboard is once your unpaid balance has hit 0 0.05 ETH, within the next 24 hours, it will pay out to your MetaMask wallet. So for your MetaMask wallet, you can go ahead and pin it to your plugins, and then you will click it, log in, and then you'll have the option to buy, send, or swap. Clearly, you'll want to be sending it out to an exchange or swapping it into another token. What I recommend is swapping it into another token and then using Uniswap 
to go ahead and add it to liquidity to earn some additional fees. This is not financial advice, it's just what I'm doing. Now, let's talk about actually getting your money out into dirty fiat. Now for fiat, you are going to need to set up something on an exchange. Exchanges that use Ethereum are plentiful. You have options of Coinbase and Binance. One of my favorite, of course, though, is going to be Crypto.com. I'll leave a referral link down in the description below for you guys to check out. If you click it, you get an extra $25 for signing up. I get an extra $25 for signing up all up front. That's how you do it. Crypto.com will allow you to exchange currencies as well as add it to a card. You can get a basically a debit card from them and you can directly add it into the app and just click the top up button and it's pretty awesome. I highly recommend it except for one big caveat and that's that you don't control your private keys. So it actually holds it in kind of a master wallet situation. I wouldn't recommend keeping a majority of your assets in Crypto.com or of course even something like Coinbase. Personally, I would feel better with MetaMask, a hardware wallet, or of course, you know, an offline wallet all the way. So hardware wallet options are things like the Ledger and of course Trezor. We can cover those in another video and let me know in the description below out of all the videos we've mentioned which would be most helpful for you. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. And as always, I'll see you next Tuesday.